Apple has been working on a container framework that runs natively on macOS. Previously, to run a container on a Mac, you needed to run Docker or Podmon or some of the other engines, which essentially run a large Linux VM and the containers were running within that. Apple released Container, which is an alternative that is written in Swift, optimized for the Apple hardware, and it runs individual small Linux VMs for each container, which is better in terms of security. To do that, they innovated quite a lot, and they have a custom init system for the Linux kernel they use for the small Linux VM so that they start almost instantly and they run with great performance. Let's mention that this software can already be installed and is fully open source and its source code is available on GitHub. Kudos to Apple for that. It's worth mentioning that some of the features might not be working on the current stable macOS Sonoma. If you want the full feature set, for example, some networking specifics will be working when macOS 26 Techo is released, or you could run the developer beta, but that's not recommended for everyday use, of course. The easiest way to install containers is, of course, with the brew package manager. It's available there, so just run brew install. After installing, you can start the container system with the container system start command. As you can expect, you can stop the entire system with the reverse container system stop command. Containers has a similar command line interface to something like Docker and Podmon, although not exactly the same. We can pull images, list and remove images and containers and create and run individual containers. Let's first pull an image. This can be done with the container image pull command and I'm using Nginx for this example. After I pull the image, I can create an Nginx container with container create Nginx and I detach it. Now my container is running. You notice I did not bind any ports. Well, that's not necessary here. Apple doesn't expose a port binding interface as they run an individual VM for each container. They just assign a unique IP address for each container and that's how you can access networking to that specific container. We can see that IP when we list the containers and access our Nginx server's default page in the browser to verify that the container is working. I can also run a container in interactive and TTY mode with the dash I and dash T options. In this example, I'll run Alpine. Besides networking as a developer, you need to be able to bind volumes so that you can share file system folders with the file system within the container. Thankfully, containers does support volume binding. I will share the assets directory on my desktop with an Alpine Linux container. I can use the volume option to specify the source and target locations. Now the assets directory is available in Alpine. So far I've run Nginx and Alpine. I wanted to see if I can run a more full distribution and how that would go if I would be able to install packages. So I decided to pull the Ubuntu image. Everything worked as expected. I was able to create the Ubuntu container. I was able to update the packages with apt and installed NeoFetch to see some system information. So you could use this essentially as a subsystem for Mac. So we can run containers. Basic networking is covered as each container has its own unique IP address and the ports are exposed and we can share a volume. So what's missing for local development needs? Unfortunately, there's no compose functionality yet. Something like Docker compose or Podman compose where you can define multiple containers working together in a project like a Postgres database, a backend service, a frontend build, and you can run them with a single command. That's still not available. Although there's a discussion in GitHub, as you can see, and people are already uh, talking about this functionality. I'm sure a community package will come up that integrates native containers with a compose functionality, or the package maintainers from Apple will build that into the containers package itself. So in conclusion, we have a native software that can run containers on Mac, which is great, however you look at it. For now, I will keep my development needs covered by something like Podmon because I do use Compose in all software projects where I use containers. I might, however, run some containers on my Mac for services that I use as a client, something like OpenWebUI, for example. With this, I'll wrap today's video. 
If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I release another one of these videos. As always, take care.